Hi, I'm Alex Gossi, owner of Magically Resin and working this year in collaboration with Craft Resin to bring you some new ideas of ways to use your craft resin, some tips and tricks to try it in ways that maybe you haven't thought of. And this is a really good one today, so I hope you stay tuned. For all of you that have been watching me or follow me on my Instagram, you know that I absolutely love using silicone molds for a wide variety of things. And it occurred to me that wouldn't it be fun to make a hollow inside of a larger piece using a silicone mold. So this was an experiment that I knew would work, but I also wanted just to make something pretty. So I made this beautiful obelisk, maybe? I'm not sure what you would call this, that has the most gorgeous color shift on the outside that I dusted the mold with. But I put a cube mold on the inside of this after I put in my crystal stones and it made it way more visible for the light. It also used way less resin, and I'm so thrilled with how this turned out. So this is the color shift, and the dimpling that you see at the top is a function of the crystals that I put in, and it dimpled into the silicone. So that's one of those, well, you learn a lesson in how things work. I will be listing all of the things that I used in this tutorial in the description below. And I would love to hear back from you if there's something you'd like to see me do, or if there's questions about what I did, or just anything you'd like me to go more in depth in or do a better explanation. So I'm using a chrome color shift, which means that it will be reflective like you saw earlier. And there is a, there's plenty, there's a wide variety of, of color shift micas that you can use. And some of them are reflective and some of them are not. You can tell that this one will be reflective because it's already reflective. So it's maybe not easy to know when you purchase it, but it's very easy to know once you put it on the silicone how it's going to turn out. It's important to note that you need a very, very clean silicone mold for this to work. Anywhere where the silicone mold has oil from your fingers or anything from a past pour, it's going to stick on the mold. I had just received this mold brand new from Shop Resin Molds because I am a brand ambassador for them and they send me molds. So I thought it would be fun to use this technique for um, this demonstration. If you're not sure if your mold is clean enough, just put a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel or a lint-free paper is even better. And just be sure and clean out your mold real well. But don't ever leave alcohol sitting inside of a mold. It can tarnish the shine of your pretty sparkly, not sparkly, but shiny, pristine mold. I have mixed up my craft resin here. Equal parts, one-to-one. -one. Volume is the measurement. And I start when it is no cooler than 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And I really like for it to be over 100 or 110 before I even mix A and B together. I find as we're moving into the warmer months that I live in Texas, so this is not a problem for me. It is not hard to get a room that's over 100 degrees, trust me. So, but it is important as we move into the warmer temperature months depending on where you live, to be mindful of the resin flash curing in your cup. So while you are working in a cooler room, it may not have flash cured and you may not have had the threat of that. But as we move into a space where you might be working in a garage or a warmer space, it's really important to make sure if you think there's a chance of flash curing that you split the resin in your cup into multiple other cups the um, more shallow the cup, the better, the more, um, the less volume in each cup, the less chance you're going to flash cure. So all that I have done to this resin was I added um, pinata black alcohol ink, just enough so that it would still be very translucent, but it would be black to make it more reflective because that is really important with any of these chrome finishes. Having black underneath it makes it more reflective. And then I added some quartz crystals just in the bottom because I wanted to give this um, square mold that I'm about to embed in it something to sit on so it wouldn't sink and it, and it 
the, the base of this mold, the larger mold, isn't flat. So I wanted to flatten it out with the crystals, basically. I also thought it would be really cool that the crystals would look neat with the light shining up through it, which it did. So all this has in it is black alcohol ink and quartz crystals in the bottom. And then I have this square silicone mold that I've been using like crazy lately. I got this set from Amazon and they're just so convenient for pour spouts um, or for pour glasses because when you use them that way, then you let the resin just sit in the bottom and you've got a really pretty little square to go into something else or to make a necklace with or a keychain, a wide variety of things. So I really like this little square set of molds, but this one happened to be the perfect size to embed in this larger mold. And my objective was just to test how effective is this and how easy is it to remove the silicone mold? And the answer is perfectly effective and really easy to remove the silicone mold. So this was an awesome test and I will be testing this in larger scale by printing 3D printable items that I can put inside or make a silicone mold of a 3D printable item that's designed to be a removable inlay that at its core, it turns this larger silicone piece into a container instead of just a paperweight. I'm not using it as a container because obviously the square um, isn't very big, but that's what I wanted to test was the efficacy of this idea. And it's, it's really good. It's a, it worked perfectly and would work on a larger scale. So I gave the initial resin a little bit of time to thicken up before I put in the square inlay silicone mold and I put rocks inside the square silicone inlay so that it wouldn't float up or move around. I wanted it to be really stationary, which it didn't move at all. And then I went ahead and poured in the rest of the resin around the edge and I sprayed it with some alcohol ink because there was a very high threat of bubbles in this. And um, I didn't want any bubbles, they would have been visible. And even, so cracked resin is wonderful for getting rid of bubbles. But in this type of thing, I actually was introducing a lot of bubbles by adding the stone and then adding the inlay. So I was very um, cautious to make sure and get it with a good amount of heat and a good amount of alcohol to make sure that um, bubbles didn't occur around the edge. You can see that the silicone square inlay is a little bit um, misshapen. This was fine for my purposes and I learned a lot from that. So something a little more rigid as an inlay would be more appropriate. So I gave this the full 24 hours to cure. I didn't want anything to be remotely soft or bendy or anything when I moved, pulled all this out. I also didn't want to get fingerprints on it or anything like that. So because this was really, this was an experiment like I do often. So I raised up all the edges and then I sprayed in a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to give it, um, to get underneath the silicone, basically to break the seal between the silicone and the resin. And it released it and it pulled up like a dream. I was concerned because of the shape of the square that it didn't have much give and it wouldn't be a silicone, not a silicone, a cylinder, would have been easier to pour, but I didn't have a cylinder that fit this size. So I, I was introduced to the D mold by Alex the Alchemist, who's a dear friend of mine, and we do a show together on Fridays, and he's just a wonderful artist. And he taught me the value of a beautiful D-mold. So I leave my D-molds in the video. If it's not something that you're interested in, feel free to fast forward. I, I like the seeing it come out of the mold and I really enjoy that and apparently other people do too. So I did the same technique as the one inside. I loosened it up and then I sprayed some alcohol inside the mold to separate it. And then I turned the mold upside down so that all of the alcohol will drain out so that no alcohol is sitting on the mold. Look at that color shift. Isn't that amazing? And it produced a perfect little hollow. So what I wanna do in the future is I wanna take really interesting shaped molds and I want to embed a, a silicone mold on the inside that's like a basic silicone cylinder 
and I want to use them as like pots for plants because it's coming into spring and it's a perfect time to have this one couldn't stand it doesn't sit flat so I ha hate to admit that actually didn't occur to me when I was doing it <laughs> so I thought it would sit flat and it would hold a little succulent but no such luck so this is the end result what i determined is because it had the hollow it would be really cool with light coming through it so i think this is just beautiful it's such a fun accent it's really a good size i mean this is a beautiful paperweight it's beautiful on any desk it's actually really pretty with the light and without a light so um i have many photos of it both ways so you see the dimpling at the top and that is because I put in the quartz crystals um, into the resin while it was in the, the silicone that I had dusted. And the quartz crystals basically just poked holes in the visual. It didn't hurt the silicone, it didn't hurt the outcome, but it did break the mirror facade of the top. So that's what you see when you see the dimpling on the top. It's the quartz crystals. So be aware of that. If you are doing a technique where you dust a mold and you also add any kind of crystals or anything that's going to be pokey like paper or anything, it could break the visual of the dusted mold. I thank you so much for joining me. This was a really fun experiment and I hope that it inspired you to try a mold inside of a mold and also to be aware as it's getting warmer, make sure you split your cup so that your resin doesn't flash cure. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me.